Hello, I'm Marty, and welcome to part 26 of the C++ SFML 2D Platformer tutorial series. You might also be noticing that things look a little different on the desktop, and that's because I'm using a Linux Mint here. So again, you can use an IDE, whatever you like to use. You can use the setup. I showed you a couple tutorials back that I like to use. So basically, I have the terminal down here, the Linux terminal, and then I have Sublime Text up here, and just my folder in the corner. So it's a pretty good setup that works. One thing I want to mention that it doesn't matter if you're using Linux or Windows or Mac, all the source code is going to run the same across all platforms, or it should, because I'm going to test out the source code at the end of each video on a Windows platform just to make sure it works and everything. Last video I said was going to be taking a whole video to cover just pointers, but somebody requested that I didn't do that. And I can see where that guy's coming from. There are people out there who have done videos about pointers and references. I'm going to be covering them a little bit, but if you want a really in-depth understanding of it, which I would recommend, you can check out something like the Journal Project. Here's the code where I left it in the last video. You can see that we have multiple platforms. Our player and our platforms are scaled to size now. In this video, we're going to be covering a lot of things. Memory management, polymorphism, inheritance, a lot. So that this way we can get an entity class going, which is going to be a wrapper that wraps around our platforms, and our player. It's all going to be internal this time, so this is just working on the under the hood engine. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create an entity class wrappers. This is going to get complex quick, so we're going to actually create a new C++ document to store all of our finished up functions in a different file. So we just go control new on sublime text or whatever. There's different methods of doing it, but this is the most basic method. You just go control new and boom new document. Now let's start by saving this, Control shift save you've got your project director here with your build compiler script right there, and inside source is where we want to save this. We are going to call this entity, it's pretty common for it to end in CPP, although you can use whatever extension you want because this, the extension means literally nothing to compiler, as long as if you tell the compiler this dot whatever file is to be read as a C++ source file. So we could do it like dot marty, but it would just be a bit of a pain to have to tell the compiler that dot marty means a C++ file. So we're just going to go with dot cpp. That makes a lot more sense, especially if we have someone else working on this. And we're just going to save that there. All right, now we're going to need another one. And this we can go control shift save. And we're going to want to create a new directory, or we already have, called include. Now inside include, if you haven't already made the include folder, make it now. Inside include is where we install all the header files. I'll explain in a minute of what a header file is. So I'll just tuck that back in the corner, minimize it. And we're going to save it in include. And we're going to call this entity with a capital. It's common practice to use capital first letter when you're naming a header file. Entity dot. And we're going to go with HPP because I love C++ a lot more than C. Although dot H file would work and a dot anything file would work as well. We're just going to go with dot HPP because we are using C++. And now I'm going to explain a little bit of what we, why do we have these two different files if we're just trying to split up a little section of our code. This file here is basically a copy and paste file. All this essentially does is it copies the contents of this, whatever it is in here, and it copies all that, control C, and pastes it right in here in the compiler. That's all it does. It's just so that the compiler can find all this good code in there. It doesn't really do anything this besides copy and paste this code into there. That's all it's really requested for. The only difference it makes is that we can store finished functions and classes in different files as we complete them. So it's not quite such a big main.cpp file. So that is the reasoning behind that. So let's start with the HPP file. I'd like to work on the header file first. We're going to start with something called an hashtag pragma once. What this is, is it makes sure that these contents of this is only copy and pasted once. Next, we're going to go hashtag include. Now, let's just import our libraries that we're going to use, which in our case is only sfml forward slash graphics. That's all we're going to need for includes. Now, let's create this class. So, class entity with capital T, and then add a colon. Now, this might look a little bit different to you from the classes we've been using so far. So far, we just go with this little class and then just some curly braces. But no, we're using something called inheritance, which is essentially copy and pasting more code. And now we're going to actually have an access specifier in here called public, which is just to say every function in this code has access to this little declaration here. Public, and we're going to go SF, it's a member of SF, drawable. We're also going to need one more public. Well, here, let me just make this font slightly bigger a second. And this is a transformable. And now we finally open up our curly braces here, like you would normally. So what this does here is it's called inheritance, 
It is we're inheriting every single function, every single part of this SF drawable, and we're just copy and pasting all that good stuff right into here before we write any code. And that is also how we're going to be using Entity as a code wrapper that's just going to be the base class for things such as a platform or a player. So we're going to do that exact same thing if we have ourselves a class player, and then we're going to be going colon, and we're going to be using Entity right in here, except public first. So that when it comes time to use our player, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're just going to copy everything that Entity has into our player. And this is something called polymorphism. The reason it's called that is because we're in inheriting all this good stuff from Entity, which Entity inherits a whole ton of good stuff from here. This w That was just the phone ringing. Well then what is the point of all this, you might ask? Why make it so complicated, use these complicated terms such as inheritance, polymorphism, what is the point of all this? To save lines of code, that is it. You could rewrite every single line of code that came with SF drawable. You could use it in different ways, like you could go drawable and then use it not as a member function, but that's gonna result in bigger file sizes. Now we are going to go start with private, and again, private is just an access specifier. And inside private, we're going to create a void, it's just a black void of anything, void draw. The parameters it will read is SF colon colon render target and we're just going to name our little variable that exists in only inside draw as target. This parameter that we pass in is essentially passing in the window as an argument. So that's all that that is. We're also going to use SF colon colon render states and we'll call this states and that is all the parameters we're going to need. The public variables we have here is going to be SF colon colon vertex array. At long last we are creating an array of vertices which we could just use like vector 2f and create an array based on that, but there's an easier way, which is just vector array, sf vector array. So this is a simpler way, let's use it. Vector array, and we're gonna call this m underscore vertices. Now why am I using an underscore when I've said before I don't like using underscores? m underscore stands for member, so this is a member variable, it belongs to this class entity, that's all it's really saying. Next is sf colon colon, and this is going to be a texture. And we can call this M underscore texture. And the last will be a transformable class. So just transform. And we could call this M underscore transform. Oh, and we also want to make sure that void draw here stays as a constant. So we just add constant at the end here. Why do we add the constant? Because again, this is going to be used in polymorphism. So we want to be sure that this, this function cannot be changed later. All right, and that's all we need for entity.hpp. Save that, good to go. Now in entity.cpp, things are a little bit different. First of all, let's start with a hashtag include. We are going to need to include the same libraries. We're gonna go with the SFML graphics library, SFML forward slash graphics and .hpp. And now we actually include entity.hpp right here. The reason we did this is, it's again, it's the way the compiler and linker works. What I like to do when I'm using my own header files, instead of using angular brackets, I like to use quotations, which you can actually use quotations in place of these angular brackets all the time. It's literally the same syntax, exact same thing. The only difference is none. But since we do have two different ways to program this, we're just going to go with these little parentheses when it's our own library, just to tell us it's our own library. That's probably why the Creative C++ actually did that. And you might be saying to yourself, well, how are we going to include something that's one directory back from us? Well, to do that, we just go dot dot, forward slash, and boom, you're back one directory. And now I want to go into include, forward slash, and now while we're inside include, we can go entity dot hpp. Boom, we've included ourselves a library. And now we are actually going to give a body to all the functions we declared back here in the .hpp file. We're going to give them a body in here. That is what the .hpp file does. It declares them and entity.cpp gives them an explanation. The only function we need to give a body to right now is just the draw. So we can actually just copy and paste this because actually it's fairly similar. Control C. And now what we do is paste it in here. Now the only difference between this line of code here and the line of code back there is that Right before we say draw, we need to just say, say, what is this draw? Because right now, I mean, we actually could do this if we just had, op had open up our curl braces here and give it a body here. And then this draw function would just exist just inside this .cpp file. So to say that we're actually dealing with the contents of this void draw, we have to say using the aneroscope resolution operator entity dot and then two colons. So to say that this draw right here 
belongs to entity.hbp, which is declared up here. So that's what the entity then two colons does. Like, like you saw we did with the sf colon colon. It not only works for namespaces, it also works for classes. Now let's go back here. Something I missed was a semicolon here. You do need to have a semicolon at the end of a class declaration. Now just end it like that. Should be able to save that and this shouldn't have any issues. So let's write this drawing body. So let's go states dot transform and then we're going to go equals equals our own transform. So this here is the states again is it's binds together our texture or vertices and our transformations. Next, next we're going to go states dot texture and we're going to set that equal to the memory address. Like I said, I was talking about the memory address pointer thing before the memory address, which you just go ampersand the memory address of M underscore texture. So what is this little ampersand all about? You might ask. Good question. I'm just going to pull up an example I had around here somewhere. Just let me switch workspaces a second. That's a pretty Oh, I don't know if that, did that wreck the recording? I hope not. I wonder if switching workspaces wrecks the recording. I bet you can't do this in Windows 10. So here I just have just a new project here, nothing fancy here. Just to set up something really quick, just to show you what I'm talking about. So let's create int a, and let's set that equal to five, the same colon. So nothing advanced yet, right? Now let's print out that value. So let's just go std colon colon c out, and then let's go a, and then let's go std end line. There we go. If we save that and if we run that down here, we should get five. And we get five, just like we thought. But now, what if we put an ampersand before A? And we no longer have gotten five. We have this weird hexadecimal little thing. This is the memory address of where this variable exists on your CPU, on your processor. That is what this is. This right here is binary code read in the hexadecimal system. Now, if you actually compile this a couple times, you might be noticing that the number is significantly different. And that is because it can't store in the same spot every time because your CPU is going so fast that a bit of memory might be unavailable at one moment and available the next moment. And now what you can do with the memory address of A is you can also create a pointer, which a pointer is just a different variable of the memory address of where this A variable actually lives on your computer in a sense. It's like its home address. Then you just go asterisk, and then you can name it whatever you want. We'll just call it A pointer. And then set it equal to the memory address of A. So that this way, we can't just use an int because, I mean, this is just an int. We have an X, we have letters and numbers in here. So an int is, of course, not going to work. But we can use an integer if it's a pointer type integer. So instead of printing A, let's print A pointer. We should actually get the exact same result if we just printed it. We can just copy and paste this. These two lines of code are exactly the same. They're going to do exactly the same thing. You can see here, we've got the same number, the same memory address, just using a different way. One thing to keep in mind, in certain situations, you can use a pointer or a reference. It doesn't really matter which one you use. A pointer and a reference are, a, I mean, of course, probably somebody in the comments is going to say, pointer and a reference, they're not the same. But essentially, they're the same thing. They do virtually the same thing. A reference is just... It just makes it syntactically easier to look at. What good does this actually do? This actually speeds up our code significantly because let's create a void. We're going to call this add and it's going to take an integer. Clarity, let's not use a. Let's just go with b and I'll just add 5 to b. So let's just go plus equals 5 or 6. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's take out the unneeded print statement right there and take out where we actually create this pointer. And I'll use this add function, open up some parameters and let's just give it a. So now if we print out a, you would think that we should be able to get 11, right? 6 plus 5, that equals 11. Control save. Let's test that out. Nope, we still get 5 because what this is doing is right here, this void add, this line of code is creating a new variable called b that only exists inside this void add. This is called passing by value. It's copying the value of a, pasting it into the value of b, creating a new variable in the process, and then in here adding 6 to that value. So what we can do is we can just add an ampersand right there, and instead of passing the value of a over here into b, we're passing the memory address of a over into b. Now, if we compile and run this code, we should get 11, and yes, we do get 11, because what we have done is we have told void add the where a lives, and then based on that, 
add it's just gone over to where A lives and then added 6 to just A. Now there's actually a different way you could do this. You could actually give it the memory address of A right here. And then instead of taking the memory address, it would take a pointer, an int pointer right here. And then we'd actually have to dereference B by going open up some parameters because again, the order of operations will dereference it last and then add it first and then just go B and close up parameter. And that will actually give us the exact same result or it should. And yes, it does. This and the method I just showed you before is exactly the same. It does underneath the code, it's just the same thing. What's the point of using a reference then? Well, it looks a lot nicer because, I mean, what is this asterisk, open up parameters, I mean, it, it just doesn't really look that good. Whereas with a reference, we'd only need to use one funny looking syntax thing right there, which I like to go actually put the ampersand right there, which I'll save, and again, it's going to do exactly the same thing. To sum up, a reference, memory management, it's dealing with where these actual variables actually live on your processor. That's essentially what it's doing. Now, if you're a bit confused, I don't blame you. Memory management is a bit confusing. Well, it's a lot confusing if you ask me. But the Trinal Project made a really good in-depth video of how memory management works. So you can check that video out. So that said, let's finally get back to our code. We can just close out of this. Now I can switch workspaces again. Oh, that looks so nice. So now you know what the little ampersand is doing. It's just taking the memory address of m texture and it's giving it to states.texture so that this way it doesn't have to create another variable. The final thing we want to do is go target dot draw, open up some parameters. Parameters we want to give it is m underscore vertices. This is final where we're going to use vertices and states. We missed out on a semicolon right there. And we have one more error. We missed out on a T there. Slight little typo there instead of transfer from transform and right here we did the same mistake transform and one last thing with memory management we actually want to use the memory address of our render target because we don't want to create another window because the way we're going to do this is probably going to look a little funny because out of all this we're finally not actually going to be using draw as in entity dot draw something no we're going to be using still using window dot draw but because we're using ourselves which has this draw function as a parameter, it's going to just magically work. It is complicated, but if you take the time to just think about how it, everything comes together, it does make sense. The parameter is the actual variable, our window is the actual parameter here that we're using. That's why we use an ampersand there. And also something I should mention, if we change something in entity.cpp that's part of the parameters right here, you actually have to change it back here as well. So we need to add an ampersand there because again, we're using the memory address of our target, which is the window, which everything draws down to. And at long last, our code works this is exactly where we left it. The last thing we need to do now is go back to main.cbp and now we can finally include our own library. So let's go hashtag include, open up some quotations and now dot dot back and include because that's where we stored it forward slash entity.hpp control save let's make sure that that works that way too and there we go our game is running perfectly exactly the way it was running before everything might look the same there's no visual progress this time but we are getting prepared for next video which next video we're going to be using vertex arrays to recreate our player so that this way we could dot like a vertex there one there one there and there to get a better area around the player so there we go with that said i hope you guys all enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments just leave it down below in the comment section thank you for watching and subscribing and i'll be seeing you guys next video eat your marshmallow